In any life, we have highs and lows, light and dark, wins and losses. What happens when we encounter that moment in time when what happens next could change everything? Join us as we step into another person's inspirational moment and see how we can connect their experience to ours. This is Greg Stevens, and you're listening to A Shot of Inspiration. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of A Shot of Inspiration. My guest today, I just met, but been studying him for the past few weeks once I scheduled him on our podcast. He is happily married, a number one best-selling author, global entrepreneur, filmmaker, and co-producer of the Personal Growth Hall of Fame. He and his bride are best known for remarrying in a different state or country every year. Several of his current goals are to marry his bride 100 times by his 100th birthday, uh, continuing making great movies with Take Action Productions, and massively grow his marriage greatness movement to guide and mentor people of greatness. He also guides entrepreneurs through self-love quest. This is Evan Money. Evan, welcome to your shot of inspiration. Hey, Greg, excited we could connect. This little sketch in the beginning, I'm like, where's the link? Where are you? But we're here now. Yay! <laughs> and I love it. I love it. I want to take it wherever we want to. But I would like to start out by talking about how you came to this idea of marrying your spouse repeatedly and what that's done for your marriage to your wife, Susan. Oh, sure. So it came out of massive pain and problems. And so to the audience listening, you know, you hear that great intro and I don't know what PR firm wrote that, but I'll take it, right? Like, yay. And you know, oh, everything's great for Evan. But the reality is, and you're listening to this podcast because it's like, hey, stuff's going on with me. I need to get inspired. I need a little shot in the arm. I need a little attaboy. I need a little, and the simple truth is we all need that. And so what I saw was a crisis, especially for me, you know, coming from a normal dysfunctional family and raise your hand if you can relate, right? <laughs> and so, yeah. and so when it came to relationships, all I saw were three options, Greg. You could either be married and miserable. And I saw that a lot. And that was also modeled for me on just about every TV sitcom, right? And that was the whole thing, right? Or you could be divorced and desperate. And my parents modeled that for me repeatedly because it was multiple marriages again and again and again. And my dad had it down. He was like every 10 years, like, <laughs> and he'd go to the same place, the same pastor, wear the same suit, <laughs> the same vows, just like rinse and repeat, like, here we go. And so again, I get so this divorced and desperate, married and miserable. And then the one I chose was single and cynical because it was like, this is crazy. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. So I guess I'll just be cynical. And that's the way it goes. And that did not serve me well. It caused me tremendous pain and problems. And I was just so desperate. It was really out of rebellion. So I'd love to say, Greg, it was Christ light and all about love. And it was pure rebellion. And I was like, I am not living this way. Yeah. You know, I'm not doing what my parents modeled. I'm not doing the single and cynical thing. This is not working. Right. So how can how can I rebel against all of this and say, I'm going to go do this? So the farthest from that pure rebellion is how do I figure out happily ever after? I, I know Walt Disney was on to something. <laughs> Disney was on to something. So we knew happily ever after we're like, okay. That's good. It has to be possible. How can I go find it? And so when my bride and I first got together, we thought it was about the quest to go find happily ever after. Mm -hmm. And so we realized it wasn't a place to be found. You know, I've discovered, right? The, 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 the mail, right? We're destination driven, right? Point A to point B. Let me go find it. Let me go climb the mountain. Let me go do this. Uh, let me finish the mission, right? Mission. Right. So I'm on this mission to find happily ever after. When I realized it was actually a place that my bride and I created every day. And it was just like, oh my gosh, I get it now. It's this daily, hourly, minute by minute creation. And you know this, Greg, you, you've been there, right? Like, for any, if, you're, if you're listening to this podcast and you have challenges with anxiety, which most people do, the only way you can have anxiety and fear in your life is if you're thinking about the future, right. okay? Right. You can't be anxious or fearful when you're not thinking about the future. And as well, the only time you can have regret and disappointment is when you're thinking about the past. Right. Right? Right. So it's like, okay, 
how do we focus in on right here, right now? Like, this is what I'm working with right here, right now. And so that was kind of the quest. And my bride and I have been blessed to have, we're now, we just got back from wedding number 29, Greg. Yes. yes. And we've had some epic, amazing experiences. And we've had little tiny private ones. We've done it all, right? Like some of the past big ones or, you know, we did the top of the Sydney Bridge in Australia. We did, last year we did Dubai at the Burj Khalifa for those, for those uh, Tom Cruise fans, Mission Impossible yeah. building and all that. So we didn't do it on the outside of the building. We were like, <laughs> we were covered. And then we thought this year, we're like, okay, we've already been to the highest place in the world. Like, where do we go from here? So we're like, Noah's Ark. So for those that don't know, in Kentucky, in the United States, I know you have a worldwide audience, Greg, but in the United States, in this little tiny town of Kentucky, like not even a big city, like podunk, like one, you know, one stoplight kind of thing. Someone built a life-size Noah's Ark to scale. Really? You can go in, yeah, you can go inside. They they basically created a theme park. There's a petting zoo. Like we get to pet kangaroos, Greg. Not in Australia, actually, in Kentucky at Noah's Ark. Right? Now, did you get to did you get to meet the real Noah, the guy who built it? <laughs> well, that's well. This, this is part of it. it's funny because my bride's like, okay, so we we're like, okay, look, because we theme like each one. Because we like to have a lot of fun with it. And we're, my bride wasn't too excited about dressing like Noah's wife, you know, like a burlap potato set, right? So we're like, oh, let's go with an animal theme. So we kind of played around with it. So we had a zebra wedding theme. So, but no, we did not get to meet Noah, but we got to put our heads in the little wooden thing, right? And you could, <laughs> so we had a lot, tons of fun over there. That's so great. again, but it was all birthed out of pain. It was all birthed out of all this stuff that we didn't want to repeat and we thought wow what if we did this instead mm -hmm. and then again that's when we discovered it's like no it's not about the destination it's not about oh, all the cool stuff it's about taking the dedication mm -hmm. to each other and not about the details not about oh we're going to this cool place oh we're going here it's more about the dedication and the devotion and that created this magical space greg mm -hmm. where I mean, you, you've heard it. Some people come to like, hey, you know, the seven-year itch. And, you know, we've been married 20 years. And how do I get out of the rut and all this? And so we discovered, and this is a whole nother segue, but just the concept uh, birthed by Tom Brady and TB12 of prehab versus rehab. So instead of saying, gosh, how do I get out of this rut? How do we not get in the rut to begin with? To begin with. Very yeah. Good. So for, for Tom Brady's fitness stuff, it's like, Hey, how do I do exercises? So I don't get injured in the first place. Right. Rather than, okay, I'm hurt. Now I have to rehab. Right. And all this stuff. So how do we get to the point where I'm not hurting my spouse? How am I not hurting my bride in the first place? How am I not getting to the point where her love tanks are depleted and she's miserable and angry and lashing out, right? Like, how do I get that on the front end so I'm not dealing with it on the back end, right. right? Because you've been there, Greg. She hurts you, now you're hurt, now you withdraw, now we're not, like all this stuff. So how do we cut that off before it even happens? And we discovered by getting remarried every year, maybe once or twice or three times, I'm in this constant post-honeymoon bliss or excitement for the next fun, cool trip, wherever it's going to be. Right. And the first 10 years of our marriage, just again, for those listening, are like, yeah, that's great for you, Evan. You got all this money and you're doing all this stuff. And so, yeah, money was not, I was not born with it, just so you know. And for the first 10 years, we had to get really creative because we had no money. Right. But we discovered, right, it doesn't matter if it's Dubai. It doesn't matter if it's this little country church over here. It doesn't matter if, you know, it's over here, big, small, little, whatever, that is irrelevant. The relevancy is, again, the devotion and the dedication. And that keeps us in this state to where when my bride will laugh and she goes, yeah, I know I've been a little ticky lately. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't even notice, right? I'm, I'm focused on the pre-honeymoon bliss. So as you can tell, listeners can tell, I specialize in long answers to short questions, but there you have it. That's awesome. And I love what you said about being in the moment, uh, looking forward or looking back. That's what, when you were talking about, what I heard was the intent to understand, to unravel, to get, be present with your spouse. 
I, I have never I've just met you. I'd been divorced twice years ago, and I was like 18 years before the marriage that I'm in now. And I got married Christmas Day 2020. Woohoo! And I never thought I'd get married again. And we decided, Emily and I, I really finally knew someone, but my previous marriage, I didn't know very long before we got married. And I learned I needed to spend time getting to know this person rather than this idea of what my relationship should look like. Ooh, and good. yeah, oh, and say that, uh, say that again, Greg. That, that's that's <laughs> pause. Pull the car over. Write this down. Say that again. Yeah, that have it. Have, make sure that you actually know someone rather than trying to live into the idea of what you think your relationship should look like. So, and I lived that many times. But then when I decided to get married, I was really clear. We'd been together for almost five years, and we had I had this crazy idea. I said. We talked about getting a ring and we went and got made the ring. I just wanted it available when we were ready to do it. But we we weren't going to do it for a while. And I came home one day, I got said, you know what? I'd like to get married on Christmas Day. And I'd like to do it with not telling anyone. Let's not tell anyone. And let's do it by surprise. Even her kids. Her kids' mm. son at the time was at AM, her daughter was in high school. And she said, this Christmas? Because it's only two weeks away. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And she said, that's a great idea. So uh, on Christmas Day, we said, hey, y'all need to get dressed and come down. We're going to take pictures in front of the tree. And they were like, you know, get, get up. They really don't want to do that on Christmas. Why couldn't we do this later? I said, well, we're actually getting married in five minutes. Yeah. And so we got married. And what was amazing to me was because I knew I had done my work. I had, and when I sat down, I thought it wasn't, I didn't think it was going to change much. But about five minutes after we said I do, uh, we were doing other things. But I sat down and all of a sudden, this amazing peace that I've never experienced just washed over me mm. because I knew I was in the right place. I was doing what I needed to. And for mm. me, God was the center of that relationship. And, you know, mm. it was where I wanted to be focused. And I told her early on, I said, that's going to be my focus. And you're a part of that with me, but God will be what I'm focused mm. on. Mm. And I found when I did, when I've done that, everything has fallen into place around our relationship. But it also helps me, like you were talking about, be present in that moment, which is so important rather than your dreams and all those things. Those are going to ground if you're present in this moment. And the yes. past can't do anything about that. Yep. Why, ha why have that? I, I, I really love what you said there. Spot on. Yay! So, well, tell me a little about uh, what are some of the inspirational things that have kind of changed your direction in life? Anything, any, any stories about uh, something that could, took you to a different place in your life? Oh, absolutely. So I've got two. Okay. And I've got a, a like a right now and then a past. So we'll stay on the marriage theme, right? So I want to really reach out to those that, because uh, for me personally, when I hear certain podcasts or I watch videos or whatever, I still have self-image challenges that came from the way I was raised and some of those things. And I'm taking more and more responsibility for my feelings and processing those faster. But anytime I listen to a podcast and somebody's doing great and doing this and doing this, you know, my, my uh, compareitis, as my buddy Angel talks about, just flares up and it's just like, oh yeah. Um, so with all that, yes, my bride decided to join me and not tell anybody. So <laughs> she's showing off the, the back of her new hairstyle. So she's there. Hey, Susan. <laughs> Hi, glad you made it. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> this is great. If you haven't watched, if you're listening to this, folks, you should go on YouTube and watch this. It's really great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Susan, glad to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yay. So yes, lots of fun with us. So, so with that, so again, my compare normally flares up when I hear people doing really well or their dreams are coming true and mine aren't. And that's a typical response of, like you talk about the present, right? Like how much we live in lack, right? Because my comparitis flares, I get a little anxious or jealous because, oh man, Greg's crushing it over here and he's doing this and doing this and I'm not. So that means I don't have enough. 
And it's like, well, wait a minute. Yes, I do. Like, hold on. So I got to process that and go through that. So to help some of those that are listening to this and going, okay, that's great for, you know, Evan and Greg, but what about me? So when my bride and I first got married, we had way more month than money. Yeah. She was a, a brand new high school school teacher at that time. And we we're talking in the 90s, <laughs> you know, making four bucks an hour, something ridiculous like that. So as a full-time school teacher working a bazillion hours a week and all that stuff. And I was a struggling entrepreneur. And so my big vision, like it was my bride's dream. It was her idea. Like we came from both sides of the tracks. She grew up, her parents modeled and we're so thankful. They were great providers for her, but they kind of fell into that married and miserable and just lots of challenges and lots of dysfunction, but they were great providers because that's the, where they came from. Like, it's all about providing. Let's just provide. So she was well provided for. Me, on the other hand, there's lots of love, but dysfunction, but no money. And so we get married and she wants to do things like go to the grocery store <laughs> and buy stuff and fill up the car with gas. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, I put like $2 at a time in. Like, that was kind of our, our contention. So we had literally have no money. And she has this great big dream that we went to this big dream seminar and got inspired. She's like, let's get remarried in a different state or country every year. And I'm just like, I don't even know how we're going to have enough gas to get home. <laughs> but I didn't want to be the dream stealer. And I still remember my, my first, and I argued with him a lot, my first mentor. Mm -hmm. I've learned now not to argue with my mentors, but to actually listen louder. But my first mentor, Jim Rohn, said, hey, you're either going to find an excuse or find a way. And it was like, oh, okay, so let me find a way to do this remarriage thing. So Greg, all I could think of, you talk about what transformed me. Mm -hmm. In my mind, this is how big I could think. We lived in Southern California. And I said, okay, I could save enough money in a year to afford enough gas to get to Tijuana, Mexico, to get to the border, right? Easy rider, just get me to Mexico, baby. So, you know, wedding destination, capital of the world, Tijuana, Mexico. Okay, no offense to those from Tijuana, but right? It's like, that's not the, the rule, but that's as big as I could go. And I'm like, okay, we'll get to Tijuana. We'll cross the border. We'll buy like a $5 sundress and we'll go on the steps of like some old Catholic church and do something, right? That was as big as I could get. Lo and behold, that year, my bride and I ended up I say winning, we, we kind of earned it, but we didn't even know it. So I just call it a win. We ended up winning an all expense paid trip to Paris, France, Greg. So on our app, on our exact anniversary day, we are at the Palace of Versailles, which, you know, me paying attention to school, not, I didn't know what it was. I mean, it's 700,000 square feet. I mean, that's like 10 Costco's. So, you know, okay. <laughs> And I'm at the Palace of Versailles going, what is this place? And we ended up having uh, an amazing like private ceremony at the Palace of Versailles. And so I'm like, okay, God, because I was kind of still new in my faith. And I'm like, all right, my capacity is Tijuana. Your capacity is the Palace of Versailles. <laughs> like, maybe you're on to something. <laughs> like, well, let me start going that way. And I would love to say, right, everything shifted and I made my first billion dollars and everything. No, I struggled for so long. That's again, that's why I get frustrated when I hear people with these radical, like overnight, I turned everything around. Mine was like 180 degree, one degree a month, like took me forever. To find, and still, right, like God wants to do these amazing things and I'm holding on to my limitations, right? I'm like, eh. So that was one big thing. Once like he opened my eyes to the possibilities, like, okay, God, this, uh, you're on to something. But again, it took me a long, long process to get there. And then a new one I've discovered, so we'll go brand new real time, is the challenge I see in Western religion. And I'm not anti-religion. I'm not anti-church. My bride and I go to church. We've gone to a long time. I've been married in lots of churches. You know, I'm not anti-church, but what I've discovered is that the Western church, sex, and money all have the same innate problem, okay? Church, sex, and money all have the same problem. Our human nature has made them something that they're not, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's start with money, okay? Most people listening to the show think, oh, as soon as I have enough, this arbitrary amount of money, right? As soon as I have a certain amount of money, I'll feel secure. I'll feel financially free. And what people with money discover, 
Okay, this will shock the people that don't have it, but people that do have it realize, gosh, the more money I make, the more insecure I am. Wait a minute, what happened, right? Like what's going on? Because man made the money, money never made the man, okay? okay? And then you look at sex. Okay, sex is the greatest thing that God created, okay? My, our, our, our current pastor's amazing guy said it the best. He goes, when Adam and Eve were having sex, God wasn't doing this, you know, he wasn't covering his eyes, right? But in our society, what human nature has turned it into is transactional. Mm -hmm. It turned it into this thing where it's purely transactional or it's this ego thing for the male of like, okay, I'm so broken. So let me prove that I have what it takes. But look at all these women I've been with, right? Like this warped transactional thing. And then you go to the Western church, right? The Western church is the same way. Like, oh, clearly the guy on the stage, right? Has a better connection to God than I do. Right. Uh, I was blessed to have Joel Osteen in one of my movies. Got to meet him, got to go behind the scenes, got to see the real deal, Joel Osteen. And I was so impressed. Uh -huh. And what they do, a lot of people don't know this, the, the best part of the services are not televised. So when before the cameras come on, they have a thing where they line up and they will pray for you. And like Joel will call people down, like from the 300 section, right? It's not like this token, let's let's parade a couple of people up. Like they spend like 30 minutes doing this. Hey, come down from wherever you are, come up front and we'll pray for you. And so Joel's mom is there. Joel is sometimes there. Victoria's sometimes there. Then they have the other volunteers, right? Mm -hmm. And the way they do it, of course, as you understand, everybody wants to get in the Joel line right? Like, okay. Hey, Evan and Greg will pray for you or Joel Osteen. Yep. We're going to Joel, right? Like, right. because again, you think, okay, he's got, he's got better hair. I mean, you're close, but Joel's got better hair. Like he's got a better divine connection. And that's our human nature doing things that church was never supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. So what has become in the Western church that I've discovered is you've, for those that have go to church, we hear this all the time. Like, okay, time to settle down. It's time to worship or this is our worship time which tells us subconsciously like, oh, in order to worship, I have to come here at this exact time, at this exact place to this exact style of music, right? Right. And I mean, you remember we were lamenting, like our church is transitioning a lot. Like we still have the old pews, but there's no more hymnals anymore. Right. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, we're, you know, that, you know, if you don't have a hymnal, you're not worshiping. Okay, well, if you have an electric guitar, that's, you know, that's not worship, right? So you get all this contention, right? But it's like, hey, this worship thing is here in this box, in this place, okay? So it's like, okay, so we got that. But then way over here, okay, in a total another area, that's your work box way over there. Mm -hmm. and don't bring your work box to your church box because they're like polar opposite places, right? So you got your worship thing way over here, your work way over here, and then way over here on another plane, I know you geometry people like the X and the Y axis and all that, but way over here on the Y axis, that's your service. And you've heard the church say this before. Okay, if you want to sign up for our service project, which is saying indirectly, oh, well, you can't serve on your own, right? You got to come to this location or go over here. And so it was so convoluted, like these three different boxes, like the segregated mindset. And I discovered during my study and reading, and I'm not a, a Hebrew expert, I don't understand the language, I'm learning, I'm growing, but in the Hebrew Bible, the same word for work, Greg, is the same word for worship, okay? It's not a play on, it's not a hyphen, it's the same word, and the English translation is avoda. I guess if you want to sound cool in Hebrew, you could say avoda, but I say avoda. Okay, and so if you so in all throughout the Old Testament, you know, you will work in the fields, you will work, you will work where you work. That's a voda. And then when it says you will worship me and you will worship, 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 same word, a voda, a voda, a voda. So the Hebrew figured it out. Work and worship is the same thing. Where in our culture, no, no, it's work over here and then worship once a week. And then if you fully translate it, because that's the challenge with Hebrew, Hebrew, the words mean something, but the letters also have their own definitions. So it's such a rich language. But with that, the full translation in English, avoda is work, worship, and service. And so it's all the same thing, and it happens all the same time. So the reality is you and I, Greg, we are worshiping at this moment. Right. We are working at this moment. Mm -hmm. We are providing a great service at this moment, hopefully by inspiring others right. to, again, 
raise the bar in their relationship or have some new ideas, right? So it, we are modeling the Avoda lifestyle right here. Right. Work, worship, and service, it's all the same thing. Now, that doesn't mean that it's like, hey, I'm a Avoda, I don't need to go to church anymore. I, I still think there's some value in church, right. but it's not the do-all, end-all, everything, right? right? And too often, my awakening is like, I believe church, you've heard this thing like, I need to go get fed at church. Like, I want to get some meat. I want to get fed. And I picture like the mama bird, like dropping the food in the babies, right? Like, okay, the reality is church is a place to get recipe ideas. Oh, I like you know, that. You, you got to grow up and cook your own food here, right? Yeah. Like, so it's not this do all end all, feed me, mama, feed me, right? It's this this point of maturity where it's like, hey, let me work with that recipe. Yeah. And for my lifestyle, Greg, you and our lifestyle, hey, you know what? Let me add this spice or let me add a little bit of this or let, let, let's bring in some Cajun stuff. And oh, I don't like spices. I like more of this. And let me bring in this. And so it's just exchanging recipe ideas and cooking your own food all the time. That's a great because literally, it's, it's, Yeah, it's 20 minutes going to feed you all week. Like, give me a break, right? Like, come on. So I champion this Avoda lifestyle now where it's like, hey, it's work, worship, and service all the time. And if you look at our own, the only example we have is if you look at Jesus, right? The only time Jesus went to a church was to cause trouble. <laughs> okay? That's great. No, but the rest yeah, of this time, great. he was living the Avoda, right? It was work, worship, and service all the time. And it was like, wow. And then even when they asked him the quintessential, right? We'll do some, we'll do some deep spiritual talk here. Here we go. So his disciples asked Jesus the quintessential question. Jesus, teach us how to pray. Okay, that's big. Okay, so two, I'll give you some Kenneth Bailey deep dive stuff. So number one is he started, said, okay, pray this way. Up until then, in the history of the world, Greg, when you prayed, you prayed in Hebrew. That was the rule. Like that was actual prayer. You would recite some Old Testament, right? Or you would literally pray in Hebrew. But Jesus said, our father, because Jesus didn't speak Hebrew. He spoke Aramaic. Mm -hmm. He spoke a different language. He never spoke Greek. He spoke Aramaic. So he said, our father. So he sent, sends this new constitution of saying, look, A, you don't have to pray in Hebrew. B, our father. That includes the people you don't like. <laughs> Right. <laughs> the right. people that don't vote the way you vote. That includes the people that traffic human beings. Our father. It's all of us. Oh. And it's like, whoa. And then in the Lord's Prayer, right? And depending on, on, you know, again, it's the model, right? He never mentions anything about Jerusalem. He never mentions anything about the temple or anything about this place, right? right? He came in to take all that away and to fully model the Avoda lifestyle. Yeah. Of look, make it your work, your worship and service. So, so many business owners, Greg, get confused. They're like, I, you know, I'm a Christian, but I, I don't know how to bring that into the marketplace. Do I put a cross on my website? Do I put something in the background? How do I set that up? See, because they're in these boxes, right? Rather than just work, worship and service. This is just who I am. This is just what I do. This is what it's about. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that could free a lot of people to say, again, there's no need to get a picket sign and go bash your church, tell them they're doing it wrong. Just say, hey, grow, mm -hmm. start making your own food and saying, hey, how can I incorporate these boxes all into one? And I think you will find that you will eliminate so much pain and problems yeah. and have so much relief and your spirituality will flourish. Mm -hmm. And of course, Greg, you know, with Crucial Conversation, everything affects everything else. Yeah. And so when you get this spiritual concept of, wow, I can carry this wherever I go. I can even carry this into our living room with our family or even into the bedroom with my spouse, right? Like so much benefits of that. So again, patented, long answer, short question, but those are two areas, old and new, that have, have really uh, been blessings for me. Well, Evan, everything you were saying, I, I needed to hear today. I'm just letting you know, I, I appreciate that. And I agree with where you are, because I, I believe that it should be seen through us in every aspect of our lives. That's one of the things when I'm teaching a class, sometimes people come up after where they go, are, are you a believer? And I go, what? Are you, are you a Christian? I go, why do you say that? And mm. I, I kind of, I didn't mean to fit. No, why did you say that? Did I say something? No, it just, 
yeah, I just thought that's the way you were. I go, thank you. That's the biggest compliment <laughs> you could ever give me. Yes, because yes. that's what I want to, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't have to be my voice. It has to be my actions. And what you were talking about, the other thing I think is so interesting, we talk about church as this place. And it says, where two or three gathered, there I am. That's church. Yes. Like yes. this right now, whatever that is, for the, the going out to people, why are you here? Why are you listening to this? Might want to open your eyes to that right now. Yes. <laughs> why did I flip this thing on? So, yes. uh, yeah, it's it's all there. And I could talk to you for hours about this. So I want to I want to get your commitment that you will come on again. And I want to get deeper with some other things because everything you were saying just a moment ago was speaking to me because I was running into some things earlier this week. And I was like, yeah, I need to just live in that grateful place and things will show up the way they're supposed to. And I start living in that lack and that lack doesn't serve me, doesn't serve my spouse. It gets in the way of our relating with each other because it shows worry and not faith. Yeah. 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 So everything you said was uh, for me, if not anyone else today. So thank you Yay! so much. But I, <laughs> I also want to and see here, recognize your tact and diplomacy, because anyone in the, in the corporate world or, or dealing with people, and that's all of us, right? That's a real nice way of saying, Evan, you talk too much. So no, no, <laughs> not at all. So, well not done, all. Greg, well done. No, you you are awesome. I, you, I'll let, me ha let you have the floor any day, I promise you. So I just want to make sure we uh, honor your time and thank you so much for being on our show. And folks, I hope you enjoyed this. I am going to have Evan back if he'll come and oh, yes. uh, I, I could hear him over and over. And next time I want to get a little deeper in man, woman, because uh, I think we both have something to engage with around that because it's a real interesting topic. And I want to hear what he has to say. And I want to compare some of the things I've learned as well. But folks, thank you so much for being here on another shot of inspiration. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of A Shot of Inspiration. If you like this or any of our other episodes, make sure you rate it and share it with a friend. This is Greg Stevens, and we look forward to being with you next time. Until then, be bold, be courageous, and respectfully speak your truth. Thank you.